Hi there and welcome to The History Teacher. This revision video covers Weimar and Nazi Germany from the GCSE Edexcel 9 to 1 course. Hopefully you'll also find it useful if you're studying any of the other exam boards or if, like me, you just love history. I'm 100% self-funded so if you like my content please consider buying me a coffee to keep me going. In August 1923, President Ebert appointed Stresemann as Chancellor of the Republic and Foreign Secretary to try and end the hyperinflation and restore faith in the Weimar Republic. You will remember the support for extremist parties such as the NSDAP and the Communist Party were increasing as a result of the invasion of the Ruhr and hyperinflation. Stresemann hoped to stabilise the economy and improve foreign relations to increase German support for the Weimar Republic. He stepped down as Chancellor in November 1923, but continued as Foreign Secretary until 1929. Today we're going to have a look at how he stabilised the economy. In order to do this, Stresemann got rid of the mark and set up the Renton mark in its place. This worked to reverse hyperinflation because the supply of the notes was strictly limited and the value of the notes was linked to the price of gold and supported by German industry. This meant that people could see the new money had real value and they could trust it. Then in August 1924, the Reichsbank was set up to control the currency, removing it from government control. The new currency was renamed the Reichsmark and the economy settled down. People could now have faith in their currency and it gained value with foreign suppliers. This meant hyperinflation was over. However, some people were still angry because they never got their savings back and others who had lost businesses had to start from scratch. To prevent future economic disaster, Stresemann then went on to negotiate with the Allies about the reparations payment. It had become clear to the Allies that it was not in their interest for Germany to collapse as they would not be able to get anything out of them if it did. In 1924, Gustav Stresemann met with Charles Dawes, an American banker, to come up with a plan to aid Germany's recovery. The Dawes plan, as it was known, reduced the payments of the reparations to 1 billion marks in the first year, rising to 2.5 billion after five years, thereby allowing Germany to get back on its feet. The reparations payments would be in part funded by American loans, which would also go towards supporting and building Germany's industry. This would lead to a stronger German economy and would mean that the Allies were more likely to get the reparations payments. Germany did begin to recover but still found the reparations to be too high, so in 1929 they met again, this time to create the Young Plan. The plan was for the total reparations bill to be reduced from £6,600 million to £2,000 million and the payments were to be stretched over a longer period, with the last payment due in 1988. This meant lower taxes for German people, which in turn increased spending and strengthened the German economy. Overall, the financial plans of the 1920s meant that employment and trade increased, creating wealth and improving the faith of the people. The investment in industry meant that industrial output doubled by 1928 and passed pre-World War I levels. However, not everything was as rosy as it seemed. The extremist parties still existed and they opposed any reparation payments at all. And they had support in this. Any further economic problems were likely to cause an increase in support for these parties. Additionally, even Stresemann knew that recovery was fragile. It relied on foreign loans and should these be stopped or recalled, the whole thing would collapse. In 1929, Stresemann gave a speech in which he said, The economic position is only flourishing on the surface. Germany is in fact dancing on a volcano. If the short-term loans are called in by America, a large section of our economy would collapse. Okay, that is everything you need to know about the recovery of the German economy in the 1920s. Don't forget to like and subscribe and leave me a comment. I do love to hear from you and I always reply as quickly as I can. I am 100% self-funded, so please don't forget if you like my content, I'd really appreciate it if you buy me a coffee to keep it going. The link is in the description. That's everything for today and I will see you next time.